So what does a day look like for a physicist? Well, specifically, I'm a laser physicist. And the first thing I've got to do when I get to the office is have a cup of coffee. Really important. Helps me just relax, but also gets those creative juices flowing. Then, typically, I'll head on to the lab. I'll go and I'll start playing with laser crystals and start building laser systems. But in general, it's continuing with experiments, as experiments don't just take a day or two, but they can take several months to complete. But with the fun of working in the lab and being able to build experiments, there's also a little bit of admin to do. As being a physicist, you have to be able to write papers, reports, and to be able to apply for funding. But most importantly, it's about creating those new ideas. What projects am I working on? Well, I'll give you an example of two different projects. The first project is we are developing a laser system that is assisting in detecting diamonds. Now, this will tell me the difference between a diamond or a piece of quartz, or even whether it's a rock. This is really impactful as it allows a lot of diamonds to be detected at a very, very quick rate. This has a large impact on the South African economy and this will have a lot of impact on the people in South Africa, but also continue to keep us on the global map in the diamond space. The second area and the second project is by developing fiber laser systems. We're here, we are looking at developing very neat small fiber laser systems for the detection of different gases. Now, why would we want to detect gases? Well, certain gases in certain environments, like a mining environment, are highly toxic and are fatal to humans. So, in terms of health and safety, being able to detect these gases gives us a means to be able to evacuate or find solutions so that these gases are not leaking into the environment anymore. So we have these two wonderful projects, but of course those are just two projects. We work in about a variety of projects, probably about four or five different projects. How often can you say that you get out of bed and you come up with a crazy idea that maybe is going to work, that maybe it's not. Most of the scientific discoveries that we've had over many, many years have either been through really hard science or purely by accident. So coming up with these wonderful ideas, new ways to do processes, new ways to visualize science, I think is really critical. And that's something that really excites me and gets me going every day. So what are the hard and soft skills that you need to be successful as a laser physicist? Well, the first thing is perseverance. Perseverance goes a long way in all forms of science and it's really critical. You're going to hit a lot of bumps in the road when it comes to generating new ideas or even executing those ideas. So perseverance is really, really, really critical. Sometimes you'll find that, you know, after maybe even a couple of years, you never ever get to the answer that you're looking for. But if you keep persevering through the problem, it's quite important. I think the next skill that's really valuable is to be curious and to have this wonderful process of thought that goes with trying to learn as much as you can. Yes, maths and physics and a lot of subjects are really important, but curiosity is what really drives scientists. It's an area that we strive to continuously be part of because without curiosity, you wouldn't be able to generate a lot of ideas or even learn brand new things. So curiosity, learning new ideas, is really a critical skill to have. So where do I see the future of my career going? The area I work in is in laser physics, but it's part of a much larger area called photonics. Now photonics is a study of all things light. So if we track back, maybe let's say 80 years or so, we found that electronics was dominating our entire environment, our entire being, how we communicated, how we did everything. But now photonics and light-based science is starting to take over. If we think about simple things like a CD player or a DVD player, or even actually the internet, those are all light-based technologies. Light-based technologies and lasers are being used in the medical field, in the military, in communications, and even in entertainment. So light-based sciences and specifically laser-based sciences are gonna continuously grow throughout the 21st century and beyond. And this is really critical for the work that I'm doing in my career as it puts us right at the core of this development. And in future, who knows what will happen, but all I know is that it will be driven by light. <laughs>